Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news, reviews, and playthroughs. I'm Peter and today I'm playing through Marvel Champions. That's right, time to continue our gauntlet. We got extremely lucky the first time we played. Uh, hopefully that will continue again with this play. So uh, how did we get lucky? Well, we got lucky with the enemies we were facing. Um, we definitely uh, were rolling well, let's put it that way. So if you are new to the Gauntlet series, don't worry if you miss part one. It is not a big deal. Uh, every game is individual, but I take a deck that I am hoping is a good versus any deck and I take it up against um, different villains. And how do I determine those villains? The random dice of fate. So um, each time I'm gonna start with the first villain. Well, not each time, but when I started the part one of the gauntlet, I started with the first villain, which was Rhino. I rolled a dice, I actually rolled a one. So I fought against Rhino, then I rolled another one. So then from Rhino, I just start counting. Claw was the next one, so I rolled another one. Then I rolled a one, two, three, four, five, and I got to do crossbones. Then I rolled a six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I went against Brotherhood of Badoon. Now, there are some scary villains for this part of the uh, <laughs> this part of the gauntlet, so I am a little fearful what the dice of fate. So for example, if I had rolled that three, that would have been one, two, three, right to Nebula here. So there's some scary villains in this part. Oh, I just saw Mary join. Welcome, Mary. Great seeing you. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, it's been a while. We'll definitely have to get a game together. Um, but maybe that's what I'll talk about after the game. So after each game, I like to talk about something random while I'm setting up for the next game. Um, last time I was talking about my daughter with hockey. So if you're interested in that, go watch the last video. Uh, or if you want to see those first three games. Um, this time, maybe I'll talk about why I have been not streaming as much lately. So let's... Uh, there, there's several parts to that, so hopefully I win a lot of games today. Uh, but who knows, it could all come crashing down in a second. All right, so let's start rolling. So Infiltrate the Museum will be one. Let's boom, boom, boom. Four, that's not good. One, two, three, four, and it's rotated. Okay, so hopefully you guys didn't want to see a lot of games today because... <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what it is. That's Ronin, game one, expert. Uh, against my Cyclops leadership deck that has four leadership cards, none of which, by the way, are, um, none of which are allies. All right, so I'm going to place all these required ones here. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, let's see how this goes. Uh, so he starts with toughness. They already got that. One revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for cut the power, side scheme, and reveal it. Cut the power, here it is. Uh, so it's just choose. To, so if this is a boost, doesn't matter. Okay, um, all right. So let's see what we've got here. Make sure we've got all the modulars. Uh, run the accuser, power stone, ship command, standard, and Cree militants is what they recommend. Cree militants, ship, power stone, <sighs> ship command. Sorry, <laughs> that sigh is for what you think it is. Because I, yeah, didn't want, I don't want to play this right now. I got to be honest. This is good, terrible. Uh, Ronan's pretty bad. He's not as bad as he is in campaign, but pretty bad. All right, put pre-command ship environment and the Milano support into play. Attach the universal weapon to Ronan the Accuser. Attach the power stone to the first player. So I think that's at the bottom of this is the power stone. So I get the power stone. Good news. Do I remember what that means? No, I do not. I will have to look at it in a minute. I do have the Milano here under my control and Cree command ship is there under their control. I'm gonna figure out what all this stuff means in a minute, but oh boy. <coughs> all right, so first player action. Exhaust the Milano to remove three threat, threat from this scheme. Yeah, might need to do that, but I can't do that until I get rid of this three threat, so there's that. So we are getting plus one card every turn. Why not? First player interrupt. When a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, exhaust the Milano and spend one resource of any type to cancel that card's when revealed effects. Okay, so Milano can be used to cancel encounter cards or treachery cards only. So treachery cards when revealed can be canceled. All right, let's look at Ronin and remember what he does because boy, it has been a while. Am I supposed to not shuffle those in? Um... Do do do. Run the accuser. Ship command. Standard counter sets. One modular. Put the Cree command ship environment and the Milano support into play. 
attached to universal weapon. It doesn't say not to put these things in the deck. So I think ship command goes in the deck, if I am not mistaken. And Cree Militants. So I got Ship Command, I got Cree Militants. Yep, we got it all. All right, let's shuffle that up and see what we've got in front of us. But first, Mary says, uh, for sure, we got to play again. Shuby says, ouch. Uh, what Mary says, oof. Nebula would have been easier. Yeah, no, no joke. I am, uh, yeah, this is what it is. But, you know, this, I believe, is going for a record. I think the most I've ever won is four. I could be wrong on this in a gauntlet. So this could be the record right here. So come on, I got to beat Ronin. It's fine. Everything is fine. One revealed, searching encounter deck. Oh, we got that. Force interrupt. When Ronin the Accuser activates against you, give him an additional boost card uh, if you control the Power Stone. So, oh, <laughs> I forgot how brutal Ronin is. Uh, and yeah, um, yeah, okay. Attach to run the accuser, run the accuser gets stalwart. So I can't stun or confuse him either. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Hero action, take two damage and deal yourself a face down encounter card. Shuffle this into the encounter deck. <sighs> take two damage and deal yourself an encounter card to get rid of this plus one, plus one. And really stalwart is the, is the other issue here. That, okay. <laughs> I, I can't believe this. Attach to the villain, permanent. Of course, we don't attach to the villain. We attach it to us. Force response. If the hero of the villain deals three or more damage to the attached character with a single attack, the power stone, uh, switch it to that person. All right. So this can switch back and forth by doing three. Oh, my. All right. Well, let's see how good our deck can be. <laughs> Shall we? Right from the beginning. Oh, I got to sit down. Sorry. Do -do -do, do -do -do. All right. Well, I like this angle a little bit better. And away we go. Oh, Mary says, uh, though I do think there was a lot of unwanted hate thrown at Galaxy's Most Wanted, I need to go back and play it again, especially with the deeper card pool. I agree. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this isn't the best deck I've ever made, but it's not terrible. I mean, having Wolverine or Psylocke turn one doesn't seem bad with meditation. I also have Maury McTaggart. I'm probably not going to be able to afford. Oh, Forge would be nice, too. Where can I search? Search your deck and discard. All right, so I'm getting rid of Moria. I actually am getting rid of Wolverine. I want that Confuse out. I'm going to keep Forge, though. I'm going to try to get both of these allies out early. We'll see how well that goes. Is this a hero? Nope. Anybody can use that. Although, I can get rid of the threat here. Oh, what's the threat? Seven to advance. <sighs> Take two damage and get an extra encounter card. I don't know if that's worth it to prevent one damage, especially if I'm chumping. Oh, but the stalwart. I gotta get rid of the stalwart. If I'm keeping Psylocke. Maybe I don't keep Psylocke. Maybe I keep Wolverine? Wolverine and Forge? Don't worry about that stalwart for now, since I got chumpers. All right, this is terrible, but you know what? Decisions have to be made, and I have made them. All right. Oh, Tactical Brilliance. So I got to choose a Tactics card in my... I don't have any Tactics card in my discard pile, I don't think. Uh, and I don't even have... Oh, I could use it to pay. Ah, so here we go. So Search. Uh, how about the one that they do... No, I don't care about one less defense, do I? Um, what do I care about? I mean, t them taking one more damage, but I can't afford it. There's no way I can afford... Exploit weakness. So let's do, do I want to waste the priority target? Let's do practice defense. Um, so practice defense is the one that gives them minus one attack. I don't even know if I'm putting them on it uh, or putting it on them. Honestly, uh, we will see. It might just be to use for resource. Then I can get tactical brilliance out um, and get it back in my hand. All right. So let's start with meditation. So I'm going to exhaust myself. To play Meditation, exhaust your uh, Alter Ego, play this card from your hand, reducing its cost by three. So we're going to reduce Wolverine's cost by three, and then pay with this Practice Defense over here. So that is three, four, to pay for Wolverine. Then I'm going to flip up. If you guys think I'm doing a terrible job, please don't hesitate to tell me. Um, I often think I'm doing a terrible job, so we'll see how this goes. 
All right, I'm gonna play energy here to play tactical brilliance. So this says remove three threat from a scheme, choose a tactic in your discard pile and add it to your hand. So there we go, I get that back in my hand. So tactical brilliance will remove three, one, two, three, let's get rid of that garbage. Okay. Um, so I do have two things to pay for Forge, and I have the Milano. You know what? I'm going to exhaust the Milano. Can I remove threat from here? Yeah, remove three threat from this. So I'm going to exhaust the Romano. Romano? <laughs> Ray Romano? Uh, Milano to remove three threat from here. Then I'm going to pay these two, Professor X and Practice Defense, because I don't really need them, to put Forge into play. He's my chumper for the turn. After Forge enters play, search your deck and discard pile for an X-Men or X-Force support and add it to your hand. I'm going to search for X-Jet. Well, let's just put X in and see what we have. We have Uncanny X-Men. Wait, wait. For a support and add it to your hand. So, yeah, X-Mansion, X-Jet, or Uncanny X-Men. Uncanny X-Men lets me put allies in for one cheaper, and they get plus one hit point. Don't know if the plus one hit point matters because I got to chump with them. I feel like um, X-Mansion heals me, which is good, but then I have to be down. I'm not sure about that one either. I think X-Jet's the right call here. Who knows if I get the resources to pay for it, but um, I, I like the option of being able to play it and having that extra resource since Milano might be used for other stuff. What do I got to use Milano for? Uh, oh, this thing, to cancel treacheries. So since Milano is going to be used for that, I think having X-Jet is the right call here. We do have some chat. Mary says, uh, that piercing with Wolverine uh, for the tough. Yep. Uh, everybody loves Ronin. <laughs> yeah, when I said Romano, yep. <laughs> it's not Romano, Roman. Yep. Uh, ooh, you have Utopia too. Oh, Utopia. So yeah, almost forgot about that. So Utopia, that might be the other option because it's cheaper. It doesn't give me a resource every turn, but it does let me ready an X-Men every turn and increases my ally limit by one. I still think it's going to be the resource, though. I still think it's going to be X-Jet. I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. I may have to flip down and just lose this first scheme. I don't even remember what happens if I do. Um, maybe I cheat and look ahead when revealed, attach the Power Stone to Ronin, the Accuser. If it's already attached to him, give him a face down boost card. I mean, that's fine. Like, he's going to get the Power Stone at some point anyway. I just need to hit him for three to get it back, um, which I can do with my Optic Beam. So, we'll see. Sorry, I'm going to be drinking a lot of water. If you were in the stream the other day, you know I lost my voice completely by the end of the stream. So, I'm going to try to stay better hydrated today. All right, I am going to attack with Wolverine. Wolverine's got three attack and piercing. So, that seems good. Let's get rid of this tough and one, two, three damage. Then we are going to use Forge to, yep, you guessed it, poke Ronin for one more damage. Why not poke the bear? <coughs> All right. Then we are going to ready up and we are going to draw up. Come on, double resources. I have meditation, which means I could go down. Which might happen. Priority target in Ricochet Beam, which is kind of nice too. Field Commander, again, not great in solo. Uh, all right, so first things first, we're going to add two threat, because why would we add less than that? Then Ronin is going to attack for a mighty four. Uh, when he activates you, give him an extra boost card if you control the Power Stone, which I do. He is not happy about me having the Power Stone. We are going to block that with Forge. So that is going to be four damage, two boost cards which is uh, attach the power stone to run in the accuser. Well, alrighty then. That didn't last long. <laughs> and you got the second boost card anyway. So he's got the power stone. He's got a uh, universal weapon. That's a lot of damage. That is fine. Forge uh, does not go in my trash. It <laughs> goes in my discard. I trashed one of my allies the other day. I'm like, where did that ally go? This is ridiculous. Uh, all right, so let's draw two cards. Because why not? It seems too easy. Uh, so, Garden Stalwart. Seven life. Cree Lieutenant. That's nice to get turn one. Uh, if this activation... Oh. Uh, that's it. That's it. Just just Garden Stalwart. That's all. 
Um, yeah, this is awful. Uh, hull breach. Peril. When revealed, so this is a treachery. So I can exhaust the Milano and spend a resource to get rid of this. Let's see. So I can either exhaust the Milano. Well, so why would I spend the resources? Spend two mental or three damage to the first player. Um, do I need my resources? So I'd like to attach priority target. So that's going to be that. I'd like to then ricochet beam, which means I need two resources. So I'm going to need one and the Milano as my two resources. If I really want to do this ricochet beam, cause that'll be three and then three again. And I do get to draw two cards then. I need to keep meditation to play if I want to play X jet and go down this turn. Um, instead of playing ricochet beam, I could attack for one. No, I can't cause that would exhaust me and that wouldn't be good. I could blast with my optical blaster. I'm going to take the three damage. It's not good against Ronin to have any damage, but I feel like, yeah. Uh, so Mary says getting field commander in is not super helpful in solo, but does thin your deck. Yeah, absolutely. If I have an opportunity to play it, I will, but I'm going to need it for resource. Uh, Mary also says, I just exhausted Milano. <sighs> I think I need that resource. Uh, so beginning of my turn, Wolverine does uh, heal one. I think I need that resource for Ricochet Beam. So I could priority target here. Then I spend one, two to Ricochet Beam, which does three and then three again to the Cree Lieutenant. So that's six damage to Cree Lieutenant. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to waste an attack with... I mean, I just didn't want this extra two scheme on the board. We'll see. Uh, I think I'm going to have to waste my attack with Wolverine to finish him off. I mean, it could blast, but again, then I'm hoping I draw a meditation or something useful. So, Cree Lieutenant is gone. Priority target's gone, but I do get to draw two cards. Oh, there's Utopia. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play it this turn, but I can mute an education. I can meditation, so I still think flipping down is the right call. Do I care about losing this first scheme? Well, he's already got the Power Stone attached. I don't know that I do. I'm just going to lose this first scheme and pray to God at this point. I um, think that's my best call. So I'm going to flip down. I'm going to use meditation to put in the X-Jet. Uh, meditation, again, exhaust myself, it costs three less. I cannot use this resource because I don't have the X-Men trait on this side. I'm only a mutant. Uh, then I'm gonna play Mutant Education, choose up to two identity specific cards in your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck. So let's see what good I didn't have. So priority target's always good. Ricochet Beam's always good. Field Commander, again, not so much in solo. Practice defense isn't bad, although, again, I think if I'm taking hits, I'm in real trouble. Um, so I'm not going to pull that. Tactical Brilliance is an option for sure. Another Ricochet Beam. Sure, why not? Six damage, not terrible. Okay, so these are my options, really. Ricochet beam means both of them are here. I do like it, but I also like having tactical. You know what? I'm doing tactical brilliance and I'm doing ricochet beam. As good as priority target is, I've got enough other um, things in here now. Oh, 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 or I could play Utopia. So if I don't do that, I forgot I could search for one of these um, as my action. I could search for a tactic and play Utopia. Is that the better move? I feel like it is. All right, so I'm gonna search for ricochet beam, pull that out. Well, there's tactical brilliance, there you go. Pulling that out, I'm pulling ricochet beam out, and then priority target or practice defense or, oh, I'm gonna do the one that's um, makes them take much more damage, exploit weakness. Um, because that costs something. It's a great card, but I don't think I'm trying to rush him down the first time through the deck. 
So I pull that into my hand using my action here. Then with that, whatever the card was, uh, do do do, not meditation, not field commander, not that. What what where is that card? Uh, mutant education, which was in my hand. So with that mutant education, and now exploit weakness, which I drew with my thing, I'm going to play Utopia. So that's one two, put Utopia into play. Oh, I'm searching my deck, so I can't shuffle it. All right, one, two, put Utopia into play. And I've got this. Now, for this card, first player interrupt. When a treachery card... Okay, so I do not have to be in Alter Ego. Response. Uh, I thought it couldn't be played unless you were an X-Men. Uh, I don't know what, oh, mutant education? No, mutant. I don't know what you're asking, what can be played. I think I can play this. Feature allies has the X-Men trade increase ally limit by one. After X-Men ally enters play, exhaust utopia, and ready a character. Yeah, I think everything I did there was uh, allowable. All right, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to draw six cards. Okay, I got allies. Good. Again, allies are important. Utopia let me ready other allies, but more importantly, oh, and rapid responses. Oh, okay. The only thing that I would have loved to have here was um, some either double resources or a meditation. Um, who knows, maybe a heal? My one attack's certainly not that important. So maybe a heal, we'll see. All right, so. Let's add two. Ronin is going to activate for four scheme plus two boost cards, which most certainly will get rid of it, but let's see. Give the villain an additional boost card for this activation. Wow. All right. So, um, yeah. So he goes way over the threat required for this. So this first one goes away. Oh, maybe I lose that first player action. Ah, who cares? Remove three threat. All right, one revealed. Attach the power stone to run in the accuser. If he already is attached to him, give him a face down boost card. Great. Yep, why not? So this one has 10. It starts with one. Accelerates two per turn. While uh, the power stone is attached to run in the accuser, threat cannot be removed from this scheme. So I got to get it off of him. How do I do that? After a hero or villain. So I've got to be the one to deal the three damage. So guess what? I'm going to have to poke him with my optics beam. So I'm going to need to put stuff on him. Okay. So I'm going to have to poke him to get rid of that. I'd love to get rid of this. But again, it's not important yet. Because I am I, I literally just have to chump for an hour. I'm, uh, it, I don't have the action to exhaust Milano to get rid of threat here either. So that's all stuff that happened. All right. So now I take my two encounter cards. Again, I can exhaust the Milano to cancel one of it. Oh, X-Jet. Yeah, no, I don't have to be in... Uh, so, Mary said she misremembered the X-Jet. You don't have to be in X-Men form to use it. You just have to be in X-Men form to use the X-Jet uh, to generate a resource. So, un unfortunately, I could not have used it last turn, but I could get it. All right, so we got this patrol. Not much I can do about that. And then we've got this, which is also not a treachery, so nothing I can do about that. Hinder 2... So this will be at five. Oh my gosh, double acceleration. First player action, exhaust them to remove three threat. All right. Let's see, Phoenix enters play, choose a Cyclops card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. All right, so I do have tactical brilliance, so I can grab a tactics card. So let's search. I'm gonna search for the tactics card that exploit weakness, I think. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play it, but I want to search for it. So the question is, so Angel only cost me one. He could heal up now. I don't know that that's the right call. I think I just flip up. I do have the Milana to use because I will get it back. I need to get rid of this. Oh, beginning of my turn, Wolverine takes some damage. Uh, okay. So I'd like to play for pay for Phoenix. 
I mean, I could go pretty stinking nuts with Wolverine. I do need to attach something to him. Um, yes. All right. So I am going to thwart for two myself on this thing. Then I'm going to exhaust the Milano to remove three more from it. So let's get rid of this because that is, that is a no-go right there. So get rid of this, take two damage, and deal yourself an encounter card. Yeah, I don't want to do that. These encounter cards have been awful. Uh, six damage I need to get on him. I could do that all with Wolverine with rapid response. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pay two resources. One. I don't need tactical brilliance anymore. So that will be my second one. One, two. So instead of exhausting the Milano, I could have done that and pulled it back. It's six and one half dozen the other. So I'm going to play Rapid Response. Uh, after an ally you control is defeated, discard Rapid Response, put an ally into play from your discard pile, and deal one damage to it. All right. So this is how this is going to work. Wolverine's going to attack. Oh, he has one life. He has one extra life. I didn't. No. No. That's bad. Does he have an extra life? No, 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 no. That's something different. He doesn't have an extra life. Oh my gosh. That's the X-Men upgrade I have. So no, he doesn't have an extra life. So that will kill him from his consequential damage and put three on here. So he is defeated, goes in my discard. Then I'm gonna discard rapid response. After an ally you control is defeated, discard rapid response, put the ally into play from your discard pile, put a damage on him. So that's to one damage. Wolverine comes back into play. Wolverine is going to attack again, putting him up to three damage to finish off this Kree commando. <coughs> All right, so that's gone. Now, I would like to put, oh, and when Wolverine came into play, I exhaust Utopia to ready an X-Men, which will be myself. I play Phoenix for two, and I can play Angel this turn, because Angel costs one, and Utopia, if your ally has the X-Men trade, increase the limit by one, doesn't cost me one less. Doesn't cost me one less, that is the other upgrade I'm thinking of. So I can just play one of these, which will probably be Phoenix, so I can grab, grab a card from my discard pile. You know what, hold on. The only thing I'm gonna do backwards a little bit no, because I was going to put, um, whatchamacallit, on him, but that's a bad idea. If I had put um, the thing that let me draw two cards on him, then if I don't draw a tactic to put on him, I can't steal the Power Stone back. And if I can't steal the Power Stone back, well, I can't remove Threat. Who cares this turn? Maybe I don't care about the Power Stone this turn. Um, hmm. Maybe the two card draw is better. I think it is. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna retroactive something real quick. I'm gonna play Phoenix first. One, two, three, to play Phoenix. All right, Phoenix. After Phoenix enters play, choose a Cyclops card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. So I'm gonna do. Uh, let's just search for a priority target. Then I would have put it on that villain before Wolverine attacked and killed it the second time. Um, all right, so when attached enemy is defeated, the player who defeated it draws two cards. So let's draw two. Oh, my visor and X mansion. Oh, I have an extra resource. I do have an extra resource from X jet. So X jet and X mansion. I don't think I've seen lost visor, unfortunately. So I'm going to play it and just pray here that it doesn't come out. Um, oh. I can't visor this turn anyway. So then do I just X Mansion? Let's me heal. Let me see if I've seen Lost Visor. Search Visor, I have not. In that situation, since I can't blast this turn anyway because he doesn't have an upgrade attached to him. This is not an upgrade, is it? 
No, it's an attachment. I'm going to play... This is painful. I'm going to play X-Mansion. Doesn't seem that good, but with Mutant Education, it allows me to draw one of the cards, or draw a card after I put two back in my deck. So it kind of replaces itself. And it thins my deck a little. And it lets me do a little bit of healing for myself or from allies. I think it's the good. I... I, I Man, these, these choices are, uh, I guess that's why Ronin is who he is, right? They are fun, but tough choices. But without Lost Visor in there, I think this is the right call. So I'm going to use Phoenix to hit him for two, and then I am also going to hit him for two. Again, while he's got the Power Stone, I cannot remove Threat from here at all, so I can't remove that one. So that's going to be a total of one from me, two from Phoenix, a total of three more damage. So Phoenix takes one. I take one. <coughs> and, I mean, I'm not sad about how this is going. I'm also not happy about how this is going. <laughs> so let's ready up and draw up. Uh, we draw to five. All right, I got a bunch of double resources. I got armor, which is freaking amazing, because I don't think he has piercing. Stalwart. Nope. Nope. And for, oh, I do have priority target. So that's good. So I can put priority target on him. And I might even defeat him this turn. That might decide between Phoenix and Wolverine who I decide to use. Oh, I got Mutant Education, which again is great with X-Mansion. Uh, I can't stun or confuse, although I don't know that I want to go down this turn. We'll see. I got a lot of resources and not a lot to spend it on. Mutant Education would potentially let me draw into something super useful. But... The other things to know are these are all, like, not important this turn. Wait, why do I have a damage on me? I don't know why I have a damage counter on me. I hope I didn't take a damage at one point and put a damage counter on me. That doesn't make any sense, but, um, yeah, I think everything's good. All right, so first things first, we're going to add two to the main scheme. Ouch. Second thing second is we are going to... Do, do, do. Ronin is attacking. He is attacking for three, four, five, plus three boost cards. Oh no, two boost cards. Ronin the Accuser activates against you. Give him an additional boost card if you control the Power Stone, which I don't. So that's why it's not always bad for him to have the Power Stone. Um, but remember, I can't remove threat from here if, if I've got the Power Stone. So there's that. I'm going to block with Phoenix, because I'd rather have her in my discard pile to shuffle in than Wolverine. Both, well, hold on, that might not be true. Because Wolverine is going to die if I attack with him this turn. He will be defeated. Phoenix will not. Phoenix still has one more activation, so I'm actually going to block with Wolverine on this one. So Wolverine, zero boost and two boost. Okay. Wolverine is definitely defeated by quite a bit of what's going on over there. So Wolverine's gone. That gives me two more activations with Phoenix. Still need to draw an extra encounter card. Excuse me, an extra encounter card. So there's that. Mary says, if you did three damage, you should have gotten the Power Stone back. I believe that is me, though. I didn't do three myself. I only did one myself, and two of it came from Phoenix. So I don't think I get it back. After hero or villain deals three or more damage to the attached character with a single attack. Yeah. So I haven't done a single. And that's only the hero or the villain. That does not include allies. So I have not used my beam yet. My uh, optic blast. So because I haven't used my optic blast. Oh, I just realized. It hasn't made a difference yet. So I'm, I may change my thought process on something. I just realized something. I, it's a treachery card. My uh, my obligation is a treachery card, I believe, which means I can cancel the effects of it by exhausting the Milano and keep my Ruby Quartz Visor. I think I am going to switch this Ruby Quartz Visor and Expansion. They both cost two. It wouldn't have mattered. I paid with one for the other. So, yes. I do think I'm going to do that because I can cancel treacheries. Now, I may still get dingle hopped here, but um, get, having that visor out is super helpful. Just free resources. Yes. All right. So first things first, single-minded fury when revealed. 
Ronan the Accuser attacks the player who controls the Power Stone, even if that player is in alter ego form. If no attack was made this way, the card gains surge. Well, the card's going to gain surge. I could have actually canceled that um, to cancel the surge, but again, I'm saving it for uh, Shadows of the Past or uh, my Treachery. Peril. I can exhaust the mono or stun the f do any of that or stun the first player. I'm okay being stunned. That's fine. Quick Strike. Um, after this minion engages you, it attacks you. All right, so I take one damage. <coughs> Again, I didn't use Milano, unfortunately. Um, looking back, obviously, I would have preferred to exhaust the Milano instead of being stunned, but what are you going to do? All right. So, I am going to exhaust myself to get rid of this stun. I'm going to put priority target on Ronin. That means if I defeat him, I draw two cards. That's not really going to happen. I am going to exhaust Ruby Quartz Visor for my Optic Blast ability, which now gains piercing and range, so, which is good. But that does three damage is the important part here. Oh, which steals the stone for me. So now I have the power stone. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just realized this dude's here. So I can put priority target on him, which is what I'm going to do. So everything's the same. Uh, I, I still poke the one damage on him with... Oh no, got rid of the stun with my attack. I am now going to put the three damage on... Uh, the Cree private though with my Ruby Quartz Visor and since he has priority target I didn't put it on Ronin instead I put it here all right now Phoenix is going to attack defeating this Cree and getting rid of my priority target but remember that lets me draw two cards when I defeat an enemy that makes way more sense than what I originally did so uncanny X-Men X-Men allies get plus one hit point uh, if each of your characters has the X-Men trait, each of your X-Men allies costs one fewer resource to play. I mean, I've got the resources to do it, right? Like, there's going to be no better time to do this. I don't even need the Milano or X-Jet. So I'm going to go ahead and double resource and Milano to put Uncanny X-Men in. So now all my X-Men cost one less. So armor is going to cost me one, which seems good. Tactical Brilliance is not good because I can't get rid of this because the stupid power stones there it's fine everything is fine um so i'm going to spend mutant education wait i wonder can i play tactical brilliance for two just to get the tactic i don't know if that's true or not remove three threat from a scheme and choose a tactic yeah i can do that so hold on what did I pay one for? Oh, I think I paid one for armor. So with armor, do I want to ready Phoenix or myself? Oh, I already used my visor. Oh, I have Milano. Oh, and this is once per round. So hold on, that, that doesn't matter anyway. I don't need the tactics card. Only if I want to remove this three threat, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Okay, so armor comes in with tough. That is the important thing here. When armor comes in, I get to ready somebody. So I'm going to ready Phoenix. Nah, I'll ready myself. I don't want to put another damage on Phoenix. Uh, or do I not care about that? Yeah, I don't want to put another damage... It's literally six and one half dozen the other. All right, I'm going to ready Phoenix. I'm going to attack with Phoenix for two. I'm going to keep armor up for the, or the tough up on armor. I'm not going to play tactical brilliance. Because it doesn't matter. <coughs> I could play it next turn. Do I hold it? To guarantee I have a tactic so I can get the power stone from him so I can then get rid of this. Maybe I just hold Tactical Brilliance. I got the Milano that's done literally absolutely nothing. I think I'm good here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I exhausted Utopia because that readied Phoenix, and I did the two damage. Okay, I am going to hold off. I'm going to hold both of these, I think. Although I can't do three damage without a tactics card, but this will let me get the tactics card. Oh, round and round and round. All right, drawing three. Rapid response. Rapid response makes me happy. Full blast also makes me real happy. All right, Ronin. He's going down. I'm yelling timber. Yeah, yeah. All this makes me happy. All right, Ronin the accuser. I accuse you of going down. All right, we're going to add two here, which is not great because 10 we lose. Um, all right, so Ronin is going to attack me. I'm going to defend with armor. He doesn't have piercing or overkill or any of that stuff. He only gets one boost card. Uh, discard an upgrade or support you control. Oh, no. That, that's nothing. All right, so that's gone. Tough is gone. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so I draw two cards. Come on, don't be terrible. Can we get some stuff like stun yourself or whatever? Come on, easy stuff. Lost Visor. Well, I said I was saving it for this. Oh, this is an obligation. It's not a... All right, I'm going to cheat because you know what? I thought it was a treachery. It's clearly not a treachery. So I'm going to go back to what I originally had because the whole reason I kept this is I thought I could cancel it, right? So you are now watching me cheat because if I was playing at home, and I probably should have done this anyway, I should have probably looked it up to see if it was a treachery or not. So I'm going to put X Mansion in because, yeah, that the whole reason... I didn't do it was for X-Men. I mean, it's still terrible, by the way. Like, it's still real bad. Why aren't I just searching for X-Mansion? Ah, I'm so mad. That's why. Uh, search for X-Mansion. Ah, I'm so mad. All right. Well, anyway. A little bit of cheating never hurt anybody. But yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I literally had this out because I'm like, oh, Lost Visor. I was like, oh, but I can cancel Lost Visor. No, I can't. I can't. It is not a treachery. I am sorry. That was a mistake. All right, uh, so this dude's got patrol. Fine, whatever. Just six more life on the table. Who cares, right? I, I would just full blast them. Oh, wait, I've lost my visor because I am a moron. So that means there's no real way for me to do six damage to get my tactical brilliance, to get my visor, to do all this. It's really, really not good. And I can't remove threat as long as he's got the power stone. But guess what? So he's going to scheme if I go down to get my visor back. So I can't attack. This is terrible. I mean, this is literally, this is probably a good game right here. Uh, place it face down under this card. Cyclops cannot attack. I just can't attack. Nothing with attacking. And guess what? Using my thing is an attack. Oh, did I use it last turn? Okay, I'm just taking X-Mansion out of play. Doesn't matter. I think I did use it, although I could have used X-Jet. I could have used Milano. Yeah, I could have used Milano. Forget that. I think I lost anyway. It's fine. If I'm losing, I'm losing with cheating. Uh, so I can't attack. We got this guy who's patrolling. I can't get anything off of there. So I can't get the stone back without flipping down because I can't attack if I don't flip down. Like, this is a catch-22 situation. Uh, I, I think this is a problem. I think this is a problem. Because I think... I, I think, as Mary said, I think this is the perfect storm right here. Because I think... I can't remove threat here. While well, the power stone is attached to Ronin, you can't remove threat. But I can't get the power stone unless... Uh, I uh, deal three or more damage to the attached character with a single attack. But guess what? I can't attack because of my visor. Yeah, this is just... So I have to flip down to get my visor back. But once I'm down, I can't do a whole lot. I can't flip back up. I can't get the stone off of him, which means I can't thwart this. Is there any possible way? Is there anything? Mutant Education, because I have X-Mansion, lets me draw a card. So the only thing I can do... <coughs> um, 
I mean, I don't even know what I could draw. Probably nothing. That would help me. So let's do this. All of this is useless right now. If I kill him, I could draw two cards. So if I could find a way to kill him without attacking myself, I could draw two cards if I had priority target on him. The priority target's in my disc. Oh, so I can Phoenix with rapid response. All right. So what can I do here? I can't attack and there's nothing to thwart. Ah, I can ready armor. Okay. All right. So I am playing rapid response. I got to be in hero form for this to go off. So let's do it now. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so there's some stuff that I can do here. All right, after Phoenix enters play, choose a Cyclops card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and attack here. Two damage. <coughs> Excuse me, against the Kree Commando. Phoenix is dead, but she is going to rise from the ashes. After Phoenix enters play, it doesn't save from your hand. And this says an ally you control is defeated. Place rapid response, put that ally into play. All right, so going into play, I'm going to use Utopia to ready armor. And then I get to pick a card. If anybody has any suggestions for what card I should find, uh, could have used your visor to attack last turn since armor was going to take a hit on her tough anyway. Um, I did use my visor last turn, but I had the Milano left over, so it all worked out. I, I had the resource. Um, uh, 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 what cards do I have that are hero specific? Field command, nothing. Ricochet beam. I can't attack. This is attack, right? Yeah. Can't ricochet beam. Priority target would be a good one because then I could put it on Cree command. Oh, that, that was my idea. That's right. All right. So priority target is out. It is on Cree commando. Now, Phoenix is going to attack again. She had one, now she has two damage on her. So this puts that up to four. How was I planning on doing the last couple of damage? Without being able to flip down? I mean, armor can do one more. That gets me to five. I mean, I got a mutant education and pray, right? So there's no reason for armor to do anything yet. I got all these cards, all these resources, but all right. So I'm going to flip down. Not going to exhaust myself yet. I'm going to mute an education. Oh, so mutant education is uh, choose up to two identity specific cards from the pile, shuffle them into your deck. If X mansion is in play, draw a card. So here's what I'm going to put in. I'm going to search for both copies of weakness, exploit weakness. I'm putting both of them in. So let me draw a card. All right, so that's done. Um, so put those in, and I get to draw one card. And pray to God I get an exploit weakness. Two out of five chance. I got it. Okay. All right, so now I spend Tactical Brilliance to put Exploit Weakness on this Kree Commando. Armor is going to attack this Kree Commando for two damage with Exploit Weakness. So yes, I paid three cards to draw two, but that's okay, because Kree Commando is dead, and I get to draw two cards. I mean, this is probably all for naught anyway, because I still... Um, uh, so armor takes the damage. I draw two. Meditation, full bl blast, practice defense. None of that matters. Um, so I'm going to exhaust myself to get my lost visor back. Alter ego action, exhaust them. Add Ruby Cord's visor to your hand. Remove lost visor from the game. Great. I mean, that was, that was just poor timing right there. Um, so I do get the Ruby Quartz Visor in my hand, which I could pay for this turn. Let's go ahead and pay Practice Defense and Meditation to put my Ruby Quartz Visor in. 
So I got all that going for me. I can heal somebody if I want. Sure, doesn't, uh, I'll heal myself one. Doesn't really matter. I've got both of these. This one I can't even use because I'm down. Milano I can't use because I have literally full blast is my only card. All right. <coughs> so unless I am extremely mistaken, oh, well, could I have gotten rid of this hero action, take two damage and get, all right, so let's do that to at least maybe have a chance. Wait, where do I shuffle this? Take two damage and deal yourself face down encounter card. Shuffle this into the encounter deck. Sure. Gives me a little more hope. When I was on hero side, I could have done that. Sure. So I'm down to five life. So now he's only uh, scheming of three. We add two. Goes to ten. Actually, we lose anyway. All right. Well, GG. There was no way for me to stun. Confuse. Yeah. No. That didn't work. But, you know what? This was a fun game. I think it was worth its own stream. Um, I'll probably just retitle it uh, <laughs> Cyclops versus Ronin because it is the only battle I did here. Uh, it's, you know, not a typical gauntlet because normally I go against more villains. Uh, but if you want to see more games with this deck, because I think it's a pretty fun deck. It, I think it's a pretty good deck. Uh, really, Rapid Response and Uncanny X-Men are the only leadership cards I have in there. As you can see, I have a lot of neutral cards in there. And then, uh, you know, basically the best allies. Armor, um, Wolverine, uh, ones that let me look through their cards and, like, determine which ones we keep and not. So, yeah, that was a fun game. I mean, I wonder if I could have gotten past this first. I mean, I felt like I was, like, getting close. I couldn't manage threat enough. That was my biggest issue. And certainly, I don't do enough damage to get the Power Stone without being able to poke him. I mean, honestly, I had everything I needed that last turn. I made sure by holding Tactical Brains that I would get a Tactic Card to put on him to poke him, to take care of the Power Stone, to be able to thwart. Everything would have been fine if it wasn't for that stupid Lost Visor card. So, it happens. Uh... He said, I did damage to Ronin instead of myself. That's fine. I don't mind damaging Ronin instead of myself. It doesn't matter, like I said, because I am going to uh, lose here anyway. But uh, that was fun. That was fun. And Mary, is great talking to you. I haven't seen you in forever, so it's, it's nice having you on stream every once in a while. Hopefully, you could be at PAX Unplugged this year, where I know I'm going to be. Uh, I don't know if Terrence will be there or not, but definitely bring my Marvel Champions cards uh, if I show up, I might bring this deck and I have a new Wolverine deck that I'm super happy with as well. So uh, two of my favorite decks to play lately. It's funny. I haven't been. Oh, I said I was going to talk about why I haven't been streaming as much after. So this is the point where if you don't care about that, you can tune out. Um, so why haven't I been streaming as much? So there's a lot of factors involved. But a lot of the, the major one is just time, energy. Um, and it's partially because I got a new computer which is funny to say. I have worked on this computer. So you've probably noticed that we've had audio issues when I've been recording with somebody else. The other person will be either way lagged or they'll turn into a robot voice or they'll just their audio will cut out altogether. I've worked on this problem for well over 10 hours at this point. Uh, and I think I might have finally figured out what's going on. It might be when I plug in my headphones or they come out that it becomes an issue. So I'm going to try like, you know, probably an hour of testing later today to see if leaving the headphones in the whole time will fix it. If not, I might try a new set of headphones. It might just be my headphones. So next time you see me, I might have a, like one of the headsets on or whatever. Something's going on. I believe it's with the headphones at this point when I change whether the headphones are in or not seems to be when there are issues. So I'm going to try that just leaving them plugged in the whole time. The issues are never with me, they're with the other person. Ironically, I always hear the other person. So I don't even know when their audio cuts out, which makes it even worse. So this has been a very frustrating thing since I've gotten my new computer. The fact that this just, it, it's not working for whatever reason. So hence a lot less streams with other people, which is why I did some solo streams this week. The other thing is we are working on our own game. 
called Flame and Fang. Uh, super proud of it. You're going to get to be a dragon in a deck building game with a board. It's a cooperative deck building game with a board where you and your friends can all be dragons and you're doing dragony things and there's a bad guy that comes out and you got to defeat him. Similar to Marvel Champions, you kind of do some stuff and then there's a boss fight at the end. This, I guess, Marvel Champions, you can just focus on the boss the whole time. But there's like a mission for each thing and then you're going to have a boss fight at the end of each mission. So um, eight missions in all. And so it's a shorter campaign, something you don't have to totally commit to, but very replayable because we have these curse cards. After you finish the campaign, you unlock these curse cards, which let you play through. And each time it'll change up. First of all, the difficulty, it'll make it harder. Um, for your second time through, but also it will change up the strategy and the things you have to do to beat the mission. So I kind of, I'm very proud of that design. Hopefully coming to Kickstarter in September, October, but I put a ton of time into that lately. In fact, all morning long, the part of the reason the stream was late is I've been getting the meeples ready for the prototypes so we can start shipping them out to content creators. So that's part of the reason. The other thing is there hasn't been a lot of Marvel releases. So I think even before the computer issue, um, really the lack of Marvel releases has really kind of bummed me out. Um, I know I said I don't mind that they slowed down the release schedule, but it slowed down to a crawl to the point we haven't had any new villains in a, over a year at this point. So now that new villains are coming out, I'm super excited again. I'm hoping I can stream and start the campaign. I think it comes out this Friday officially. So I think Terrence and I can start the campaign next Saturday uh, hope or next Friday night when we're streaming. Now, that involves me getting it, um, the, the new expansion by then. Fantasy Flight has not, well, they said they sent it to me. I have not received it yet. So we'll see if I get it by next Friday or not. Um, if not, I might either have Terrence upload it or I don't know. Maybe we just have to postpone it a week starting the new campaign. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, oh, so Flame and Fang. Why did I bring up Flame and Fang? It's taking up all my time and energy. In addition to working a full-time job, we're basically game designing. We are publishing now our own game. I'm trying to keep up the streaming. I'm really in charge of the podcast. I've been very good about getting podcasts up every other week. Don't look at the podcast stream today. There's none up yet. I have started editing that, but that's another thing on my plate, right? Um, so all this stuff has just kind of added up to me not having as much time and or energy to do this. Uh, but that's going to change. I mean, as soon as this kick Kickstarter's up and successful, I'm going to be much less stressed as well. Um, and then as soon as I fix this stupid audio issue that has cost me literally hours of my life for no good reason and it's driving me crazy and hopefully this is the right solution of course i'm going to think it's fixed and then we're going to start streaming next time and it's going to go out and it's going to drive me crazy um so yeah i don't know what to say uh <laughs> yeah mary says um i'm loving cable domino's a lot of fun so mary must already have the new expansion i don't have it yet um, and then, yeah, the lack of releases hit hard. Yeah, I think it hit everybody. And you even notice it in the views on the Marvel Champions videos. They're not nearly as high as they used to be for any content creator. I'm looking across the board. Nobody's getting the same number of views as uh, we used to get when content was releasing on a regular basis. Hopefully Marvel or, or Fantasy Flight looks at that and says, oh, you know, and maybe they couldn't have sustained the pace. To be honest, there's only so many cards you can design, right? At some point, you're going to run out of ideas. But um, yeah, hopefully Marvel looks at this, or Marvel, Fantasy Flight looks at this and goes, you know what? There's not as much interest in the game because we're not keeping up our release schedule. And maybe that'll encourage them to go back to releasing two big boxes a year. Look, I don't want it every week, every month. I don't need that. Two big boxes a year is good, plus a bunch of, you know, character expansions is fine. You know, every six months, you know, right around Gen Con and then right around the end of the year, I'd be super happy with just that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, if not, I mean, you saw at one point we were trying to find other stuff to stream on Friday nights. Um, there might not be another campaign game. It might not be Lord of the Rings. Although I did have a lot of fun with Lord of the Rings the scenario that we played at Gen Con, so who knows? That might rekindle my interest in playing more Lord of the Rings. Uh, we'll see. Um, but for now, we do have a new release, so there'll be a ton of Marvel content. Hopefully, it won't all be solo, because hopefully, my audio issue will get fixed. But anyway, um, 
Mary says, I'm glad to know that I'm the only one who is not annoyed. The funny part is I was defending Fantasy Flight at first. I'm like, yeah, the releases were coming too hot and heavy. I think we need a break for a while. Well, yeah, that's it was too much. Um, like I said, I was okay with it every six months, maybe even every nine months. I don't know. that Even that's pushing it. If you want people to stay interested in your game, it's got to come out more. Uh, trust me, there's enough content to play this game forever. Uh, so that's not an issue, but maybe... I mean, we've never done it, but maybe we start playing more custom content on the channel. Um, You know, other people are putting a lot of work in and making great scenarios. And look, even if they're not great, Fantasy Flight's released some stuff that's not great either. Honestly, Ronin's super hard. (laughs) Like, maybe too hard. Uh, You know, not only as we've seen today, but, you know, as we've seen in the past. Um, No, I don't think he's broken. I don't think it's a too much of a problem honestly there's just not a lot of treacheries in there so i thought this milano thing would be super useful at one point i could have canceled a surge maybe that would have been the right call um then i would have had one less card that encounter phase because the next one that came up was a, a minion although that surge didn't matter it just stunned me so yeah i don't know i don't know there's not really bad i mean certainly shadows of the past look if i could cancel shadows of the past absolutely or in advance or something else Absolutely. That'd be great. But um, yeah, it just never came up this game. I never got to use the Kree ship command. Um, but I know I don't think I don't think Ronin's a problem. Um, I do think there are other villains that are not as fun as others. Um, so, you know, if the custom content's a little off, like Fantasy Flight's been a little off on stuff too. So it is what it is. Anyway, um, that's the end of my rambling for today. Uh, holding off on the Deadpool announcement also didn't help. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't care about announcements. That doesn't, because I try not to spoil myself too much. What I do care about is, um, is them releasing new content, especially new heroes or villains. Either one is fine. Uh, I mean, I don't even mind just little villain packs. Just put out villain packs at this point. We have so many heroes. It's fine. And so many heroes I have not fully explored yet i've certainly explored them all but i I don't know that i fully explored them all so i would happily play against new villains with the heroes i've got uh even if it doesn't increase our card pool at all i'd be fine with that but anyway uh i've rambled on enough for today great talking to everybody mary great seeing you as always and i will see everybody soon bye